What you can read in history books is that our history is only 8,000 years old. All of the sudden, you have site after site that proves that our history goes back tens of thousands of years. The time will show that the stories that Egyptian pyramids were tombs for pharaohs or Chinese pyramids tombs for the emperors is the biggest hoax in the history. I'm an anthropology professor and the director of Center for Anthropology and Archaeology at the American University in Bosnia Herzegovina. My PhD is uh, in the Mayan civilization. I'm the author of uh, 14 books about the ancient civilizations and uh, pyramids around the world. Eight years ago, in uh, spring of 2005, I discovered the first pyramids on European soil, the Bosnian pyramid complex. I have been investigating pyramids all over the world for the last 25 years. In the spring of 2005, I first came to the central Bosnian town of Visoko, 28 kilometers northwest from the capital city of Sarajevo. The reason for my visit was not pyramid. It was a visit to the local museum. But when I saw the hill towering the town of Visoko, with four sides, triangular faces, obvious corners, the same slope from the bottom to the top. In other words, with the perfect geometry of the pyramid. And when I took a compass, which showed me that the sides of the pyramids match the cardinal points, east, west, north, and south, I immediately knew that it was not the natural hill, but the artificial structure covered by soil, and vegetation. And even though most people think of pyramids only about the Egyptian pyramids that are located in a desert and you can clearly see the stones, they don't know that the majority of the pyramids in the world are actually covered by soil, dirt, bushes, forests. 250 pyramids in China 100,000 pyramids in Mexico, Guatemala, Salvador, Belize, Honduras, they are all in the jungles and forests. This is the look of the most famous pyramid in Central America, the Pyramid of the Sun, 150 years ago, completely covered by soil, bushes, vegetation. The hills like this, on the first side, there are thousands in Europe everywhere. Well, it took 75 years and the three archaeological campaigns for American and Mexican archaeologists to completely clean it. This is its look in 1960. This is how it looks like today. One of the most beautiful examples of the pyramid architecture. So, when it comes to the pyramids, people have to realize that the pharaohs did not build Egyptian pyramids. And pyramids in Egypt have nothing to do with the pharaohs. The pyramids are structures, the geometry. And what we have in, Bo in Bosnia is perfect geometry, layout of the five pyramids, which I later named the pyramids of the sun, moon, dragon, earth, and love. And three biggest pyramids, sun, moon, and dragon, form a perfect equilateral triangle. So as we started our investigation process in 2005 and 2006, we realized that there were a lot of geometrical knowledge incorporated in this complex. 
And finally, you asked me why nobody else realized that the pyramids were in the heart of Bosnia. First of all, nobody in Bosnia, or even in the Balkan region, deal with the pyramids. You don't have experts from the pyramids. Secondly, people have in their mind that pyramids have to be like Egyptian ones, and that the pharaonic civilization have to follow the construction of pyramids. And number three, even though the geometry is so obvious, people did not realize the value of the orientation of the sites. And my experience in the last 25 years was about the pyramids in China, Bolivia, Peru, Canary Islands, Mauritius, U.S., and of course, Mexico, Guatemala, Honduras, Salvador, and Belize. And I knew that we deal with the artificial structure because Mother Nature simply does not make hills, four sides, triangular faces, perfect orientation. Discovery of the Bosnian pyramids forever changes our view of the ancient history. Number one, these are the first pyramids on European soil. Number two, the pyramids in Bosnia are much bigger than Egyptian or Mexican pyramids. For example, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, according to the Institute for Geodesy, is over 220 meters in height, and Cheops is 147. Number three, when we removed the layers of soil on several sections, we were finding rectangular blocks. When we analyzed those blocks in six institutes for materials in Bosnia, Italy, and France, they all confirmed that it was a man-made concrete of exceptional quality. Our concrete in 21st century are in the range from 10 to 60 megapascals. The sample that analyzed was 73.6 megapascals. Better quality than what we make in the US or Germany. The second property is water absorption. The idea is to keep the absorption as low as possible. Our standard is up to 3%. The one they measured, 1%. And it explains the durability of those concrete blocks. Number four, the orientation of the northern side of the Sun Pyramid in Bosnia is the most precise on the planet. The Cheops Pyramid and its orientation to the north has an error of zero degrees and two minutes, almost perfect. But the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, according to the Institute for Geodesy, has an error of zero degrees, zero minutes, and only 12 seconds. Number five, according to the radiocarbon dating that we've done in the previous years, and especially last year, when young Italian archaeologist Nicola Bisconti discovered the organic material below the layers of soil and on the top of the concrete blocks. It was fossilized leaf. According to the radiocarbon lab in Kiev, Ukraine, that leaf is 24,800 years old, plus minus 200 years. It means that we go back in the time at least 25,000 years. It makes the Bosnian pyramids the oldest on the planet. The element number six, under the valley of the pyramids in Bosnia is huge network of chambers and tunnels. They run for tens of kilometers. And number seven, in those tunnels, we are discovering ceramic blocks that reach up to eight tons. So somebody had technology to make ceramic in such a huge quantities. So those seven elements forever changes our view of the ancient history. And then, yes, you are right. This project has become the most active archaeological site in the world. We have classical sciences, archaeologists, geologists, geodesists, biologists, paleontologists, but also we have high-tech specialists, 
for the satellite screening, georadar analysis, thermal analysis, and finally, in the last couple of three years, experts for the energy phenomena, the physicists and electrical engineers are coming to Bosnia. What is the purpose of pyramids? And the original pyramids are always followed by the underground labyrinth. They are telling us tombs. Wrong. The pyramids were not built for one dead body. Even if you call it pharaoh or king, the pyramids were built for generations of living beings, for communities, for future. They were built as a huge energy machine. In Bosnia, we have detected and measured several different types of energy phenomena. One of them is electromagnetic fields of 28 kilohertz frequency. This frequency does not come in regularity in Mother Nature. You cannot measure that on regular hills or even pyramid hills. It has to be an artificial structure, and that's what we measured. The frequency of 28 kilohertz. Look at here. We have black, then blue is moved a little bit, then white is moved a little bit, then red is moved a little bit. It's like a spiral. Now, spiral is very important. Because when you have a spiral, then you have a base for your non-Hertzian spiral waves. In other words, the pyramid is a huge machine, and obviously more than that, capable of producing different energy phenomena. Now, it's not only Bosnian pyramid of the sun that is still active today. The Kukulkan pyramid in Chichen Itza, three years ago, the tourist from El Salvador, while filming his kids on digital camera, he was able to make the photo of the energy beam coming to the center of the Kukulkan pyramid. The second one is the ultrasound. That's something we don't hear. We hear from 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Everything above 20 kilohertz is called ultrasound. And we've been measuring the ultrasound on the top of the sun pyramid only, not on the sides, but on the top. It is also regular. It comes in the blocks. When you hear the ultrasound, when you convert it from 32 kilohertz, which you cannot hear, but you convert it to 8 kilohertz, and there is a way to do that, then you are able to hear for the first time how the pyramid speaks. And that's what we have recorded on the top of the sun pyramid during the summer and winter and fall and spring, 12 months every year. And then we realized that there are several different energy phenomena. We were looking for the source of that energy, and we did find it. According to the labs from Belgrade, Zagreb, and Vienna, the source of the pyramid energy, electromagnetic one, is 2,440 meters below the pyramid. The huge iron plate. As we know, iron generates its own electromagnetic field. But what the pyramid does, it sucks this energy, amplifying it. How do we know that it amplifies the energy? Our Russian colleagues measured in Egypt and in Bosnia the strength of the signal at the bottom and on the top. On the top, the strength of the signal is 50 times stronger. It means pyramid acts as the amplifier as the energy moves through the passageways and chambers moving to the top, becoming more focused, it's becoming stronger and stronger. Natural source of the pyramid energy is magnetic energy. In the core of our planet, there is magma. Magma produces magnetic energy around our planet, and we know that. But the pyramid sucks this energy, amplifying it. The third source, 
under the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids, a lot of underground rivers. When you have two parallel rivers, in between them, electricity is formed. The pyramid gets this electricity also. When the underground water flows and moves, it releases negative ions. The pyramid is getting those negative ions. So somebody in the distant past was smart enough to know the significance and importance of this place in Bosnia. And they based the pyramid complex there to make a huge energy machines. And finally, under the pyramids in Bosnia is a huge network of underground tunnels. The concentration of negative ions, which are very good for our body, because they clean our blood from viruses and bacteria. The concentration is four to five times higher than on the best quality place on the top of the mountain in the forests or by the sea. So it was some type of the healing construction underground. So when you think now life, what are the two most important things? The first one is energy. You can do nothing without the energy. We cannot talk today without the energy. We cannot use the light bulbs. You cannot use your cars without the energy. So, huge quantities of energy, but not like what we have today. Dirty energy, dirty industries, coal and gas and oil, limited quantities, but clean energy from natural sources. And secondly, besides the energy, was the most important thing for us, as you and I are getting more grace in our hair, we know that our health is most valuable asset in our life. We want to make sure that we are healthy with a prolonged life. The same challenges had the pyramid builders. When you have energy, you can use it for communication, transportation, heating, healing, you use to protect what's the most sacred to us, our health. So now we are getting answer what was the use of Bosnian pyramids and Bosnian underground library. In underground labyrinth in Bosnia, we are finding blocks, different sizes, a couple of hundred kilos to eight tons. On some of them, we can see carvings. And some of the carvings, they look like a combination of geometry and alphabet. But the famous combination of geometry and alphabet was the first writing in Europe called the runic writing, runes. They go back, according to mainstream scientists, 2,500 years ago, according to some independent scientists, 5,000, 6, or 7,000 years ago. Now, those alphabet letters were more like symbols. Now, on one of the blocks in Bosnian labyrinth, we found seven symbols that completely matched the rooms. And according to one translation from the U.S., the message should go like this. The gate is closed. We are at the standstill. We will need to fight, to defend, and conquer until we get the opportunity again to go through the Stargate. Everything we do, we need at least three independent confirmations. So far we have only one. But I think it is uh, very intriguing. And about what I believe when it comes to the aliens, I think that our universe is very rich with different life forms who live in different dimensions. A lot of spiritual entities in our world too. But as a scientist, we have to find a way to scientifically measure and record them. However, the problem with today's mainstream scientists is that they are not open-minded and they think that only what's relied on five physical senses 
what's measurable can be seen. That's the only that exists, and they are wrong. In order to understand the ancient archaeological sites, we need to view them through three different realms, physical, energy, and spiritual. And then we can understand that. What you can read in history books is that our history is only 8,000 years old. All of the sudden, you have site after site that proves that our history goes back tens of thousands of years. Yonaguni monuments on Pacific Ocean, Gobekli Tepe in Turkey, Machu Picchu, Bosnian pyramids. So all the history books have to be changed. The PhD are not good anymore. The professorships also. The way they teach our kids is not good. It's a huge change. Are they going to change all of that? Or are they going to try to suppress the new knowledge? They can control mainstream scientists, but they cannot control independent researchers. Because what we do, we go after scientific truth, no matter what the price is. On some of the calendars, for example, Aztec calendar, which was based on the Mayan calendar, we can see that the knowledge of those recent civilizations about our distant past was very advanced. They knew that four or five times humanity was almost completely destroyed by huge global catastrophe, and maybe some of them were artificial. Mohenjo-daro, 50,000 years ago, between Pakistan and India, was a home for advanced civilization. And it seems that there was a thermal nuclear war over there. The end of the last ice, ice age, of course, destroyed a lot of civilization. And some of them, like the Mayan civilization, mysteriously disappeared in the beginning of the 10th century. The complete construction in the Mayan cities was stopped. Even some temples and pyramids that were built only to the half, they stopped. The whole civilization vanished. It was not war. It was not lack of resources. It was not diseases because we would see millions of bodies, nothing like that. It seems like they disappeared. How, where, we don't know. Underground, maybe. Another dimension, maybe. Somebody picked them up, maybe. We don't have a clear answer. There is another civilization in the southern US, New Mexico, Colorado, Amazon, Utah. It was called Anasazis. They mysteriously appeared in the 10th century and disappeared 350 years later. They simply locked their cities and nobody has heard about them after that. There are mysteries in archaeology and it is shame that mainstream scientists, when they don't understand something, they simply close their eyes. When they see 1,250 ton blocks in Baalbek, they close their eyes. They don't want the answer. They answer what was after that Baalbek civilization. They are saying, oh, ancient Romans came. Ancient Romans were not able to move 1,000 tons. We need to find the answers, no matter what the price is. The ancient Egyptians who started their pharaonic dynasties 5,000 years ago, had only primitive copper tools and the wooden sticks. That's what you can see in the National Museum in Cairo. But who was able to move 5 million tons of material and build the Great Pyramid of Egypt? When you take the length at the bottom, 
of the pyramid. It's 232 meters, two lengths, 464. You divide by height, 147, the result is 3.14, the number pi. According to the historians, that number will not be known to humans in another 2,000 years, only with the ancient Greek civilization and Pythagora, people found out about the number pi. The same way you can find the number phi, the golden number, in Egyptian pyramids. The distance between our planet and the sun, the distance between our planet and the moon, the ancient Egyptians did not have that knowledge. The biggest granite block in Kefren pyramids is 220 tons. Somebody brought it from 900 kilometers, Aswan. Ancient Egyptians did not have that mean of transportation. It was much developed civilizations, 12,000 years plus ago. And Pharaonic Egypt found those pyramids. They did not find the way in. When they tried to make a replica, they could not shape granite or limestone, but they were using primitive mud bricks. In the biggest Egyptian pyramids, no hieroglyphic writings, no organic materials, no mummies, no paintings, not, no artifacts, not a single proof who built it. In the primitive Egyptian pyramids, from the 12th dynasty, from the 18th dynasty, yes, in those smaller step pyramids, you can see hieroglyphic writings and you can see artifacts from much more recent period. The same thing in China. Out of 250 pyramids, 20 are big ones. They are built from granite and sandstone. 230 small ones built from the mud brick and they belong to the very concrete Chinese emperors from the Emperor Qin 2,300 years ago until 1,000 years ago. But the Chinese government does not give permission to Chinese archaeologists and that's what they confirmed to me when I visited the Archaeological Institute in Xi'an in central, province, uh, central Chinese province of Shanxi. They told me they don't have permission to work on the biggest pyramid. Why? Because they are 10,000 years older than officially recognized Chinese history. The time will show that the stories that Egyptian pyramids were tombs for pharaohs or Chinese pyramids tombs for the emperors is the biggest hoax in the history. Our civilization is at the brink of a huge collapse because what we have been doing in last 150 years is so bad for our environment. We went from one and a half billion people 150 years ago to seven billion people today. We have been using our resources in uncontrollable way. Our demographic is uncontrollable. We have removed 50% of flora and fauna from the face of our planet. We are like a virus. That's one problem that we need to resolve. We need to learn how to live in the harmony with Mother Nature. Because our planet is our mother. She gives us life. If you don't realize that, she will make sure that we disappear. But when we discuss our technology, obviously, you know, we cause the global warming, but that's the least problem that we have. We don't realize that our planet changes cold and the warm period. In the last two million years, every hundred thousand years, we had the ice age, and then the warm period of eight to 12,000 years would come. And during the warm periods, the civilizations would rise. Eight to 12,000. Now, when was the end of the last ice age? 12,500 years ago. So we are coming to the end. 
whether we want that or not. There are natural laws that we cannot stop. And what happened in those situations? 99% of the most intelligent beings disappear. That's what happened 12,500 years ago. Only those who got hidden in underground tunnels or in the caves on the top of the mountains survived. When they got back, they realized that their civilization was destroyed and they had to start from the beginning. It will happen to us. And those who come after us, they will think they are the first one, the most intelligent, the most developed, and the most beautiful. Well, they are not. And we are not either. Our society in the last few thousand years is a society which is based on elites and general public. Elites have everything. They have monopoly on knowledge, and through that monopoly, they have monopoly on money, finance, corporations, media, politics. Time has come to make a society which won't have elites, which won't have monopoles. One day, when free energy can be accessed by everyone, that would be the first pillar of the free society. The second pillar will be the free flow of knowledge, because knowledge belongs to all of us. And based on those two pillars, we will have society of free women and free men. That time will come, and it is up to us to bring that society in front of us. Nobody else will volunteer to do it for us. We need to change ourselves. We need to erase fears from our lives. With no fears, no need to give part of our human rights to elites political, religious, financial. Once we are free from inside, from within, then we start circle around us. And then we will reach, eventually, a society of free people. In uh, July of 2008, July 13, CNN has published the news that starting today, it seems that we are going to have recession. Until then, it was a time of prosperity, economical boom. But that one day, CNN, which was followed by all other big American medias, European medias, Japanese and all others, all of a the sudden they started talking about the recession. And recession was not on the side. It seems that the elites decided to start a new project instead of prosperity. Now they are going to destroy the hopes and optimism and enthusiasm of people of the world. In short few months, everything changed. People became too serious. They were afraid for their jobs. They were losing their jobs. They were reducing, they, were, they had reduced their salaries. And most of them did not realize that it was a planned project. And that's what they've been doing with us for ages. In order to manipulate with us, they don't need happy people. They don't need middle class. They don't need people who have enough money in their lives. They need people who will fight for their credits and loans and homes and jobs, who will live in fear. We should not give them fear. If we do, they will keep manipulating with us. We have one example in Bosnia, that one huge archaeological project is not run 
by Department of Archaeology of big universities, by national museums, by Ministry of Culture, by people who are paid to do their job, but by small non-profit foundation called Archaeological Park Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun Foundation. Enthusiasts who love research, who love pyramids, who love their own country, and who don't spare the time and the money and energy and enthusiasm. And that's why our project has the future. In the meantime, the National Museum in Bosnia is closed. They don't have enough money because they got used to receive the money no matter what. In our case, when people see the love for the project, they join us. They volunteer with us. Archaeologists who are threatened by European Archaeological Association not to come to Bosnia. They still come to Bosnia. They work with us because they know that their individual destinies are less important than the global importance of this and similar projects. Once it becomes a movement in Bosnia, in France, in the US, in all other countries, people will change. They will realize they don't need fear in their lives. Of course, from the philosophical standpoint of view, they need to get rid of the main fear, the fear of physical death. People think to physically die, that's the end. The ancient civilizations, thousands and tens of thousands of years before us, who lived in the balance of spiritual and physical reality, knew that in our bodies, our soul is forever, even though our physical body is just for one lifetime. But if you know that your soul is forever, you don't need to be afraid of physical death. You don't need to be afraid of losing material things, of losing your job. You become the master of your destiny. The Bosnian Pyramid Project has become not only the most active archaeological site, but it is the only site where, it, where we give the opportunity to common people who don't have to be archaeologists or professors and who can come and work with us and be part of big discoveries. Of course, they work under the supervision of professionals, archaeologists, geologists, geophysicists. And uh, every year we organize our international summer camp for volunteers. In 2010, we had 500 of them from 30 countries. In 2011, they came from 32 countries. Last year, 2012, they came from 52 countries and six continents. And uh, this is the experience that, according to them, was a life-changing experience in their life. And uh, this way, I would invite people in France and other countries who watch this, to come and join us in Bosnia. Bosnia is not only a country of war and violence and corruption. Bosnia is a beautiful country with the very hospitable people. And those who come to the heart of Bosnia, a little Visoko, a town with 20,000 people, and stay for two weeks during one shift, they realize it's one of the most beautiful places on the planet. And they go home becoming our ambassadors. On our website, www.bosnianpyramidofthesun.com, they can find all the terms, how and when to come. It's June, July, August, September, every year. And our gate is open for all of them.